Today we're going to show you the recipes from the plant-based meals that my family wants on their birthdays. You guys, start with the sweets from 7 a.m. Stick around to see what we make. I might have picked this for my favorite if Annie hadn't of. Come on, y'all do it. You do it. Okay. I'm not even going to seed. Oh. <laughs> well, hi everyone. Welcome to or welcome back to PB with Jay. Here on the channel, we focus on all things plant-based goodness from fun cooking videos like this one, to recipe reviews, and lots of other things in between. So, it's my birthday! Happy birthday! Hey, Daddy? Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday, Daddy! And I thought it would be really fun for us to do a family favorites video, but under the guise of meals that we would eat if we were to make something for our birthday meal. I'll be honest, a lot of the times when it comes to birthday meals around this house, we either go out or we order something in. But if we were to make a meal for our birthdays, these are the kind of things we would request. And stick around to the end because I'm going to show you my go-to birthday cake and maybe another bonus dessert. Oh, what's that? You, you want to know where you can get one of these cups? Well, we have a merch store with this cup and plus a lot of awesome new t-shirts that we just added to this site. One of which I'll show you later on in the video because my daughter is getting it for her birthday. Let us know in the comments down below what are some of your favorite birthday meals and how you like to celebrate yours. Before we jump into the video proper, I'd like to give some shout outs to some of the people who have said hi to us in the comments down below. Cheryl from Tucson, Arizona. Luz from the Netherlands. Crystal from Cincinnati. Katie from Finland, or Katie, Katie? Here we would say Katie, there's no E on the end, so I'm gonna say Katie just in, in case. Let me know. Mary from Arkansas. Michelle from Horse Creek, Queenland, Australia. Deborah from South Carolina. Sharon from Maui. Joanne from Chattanooga. And David McGregor from Scotland. If you'd like a shout out, let us know in the comments below who you are, where you're from, and how you like to celebrate your birthday. If at some point throughout this video you're enjoying the content, hit that like button so YouTube can send it to other people who might like it as well. And obviously subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And first up, we're gonna show you the go-to breakfast that all of us have on our birthday. So Willie, what's the difference between our regular pancakes and these pancakes? Our regular pancakes? Yeah, like the pancakes we make on a regular weekend versus these ones. Chocolate chips is the difference. Mm. Birthday after all. Guys, start with the sweets from 7 a.m. Pancakes are a staple in my house in the weekends and sometimes the weekdays. I'm gonna show you my family's go-to pancake mix that I have to give my wife credit for. We tried a bunch of different recipes until we landed on this one. You can make it gluten-free just by swapping out the flour for a gluten-free one-to-one, -one, and you can also add whatever mix-ins you want. What I love about this one is it doesn't add any oil, it doesn't add any butter, or it doesn't add any eggs. And I'll show you the different things we use to make up for that. First off, we're gonna start with two and a half cups of flour. I like to use whole wheat. You can mix this with whole wheat and white flour, or you could put in a gluten-free one-to-one. To that, we're gonna add a quarter cup of flaxseed. This is what's gonna act as your egg binder. It's gonna help everything mix together. A teaspoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking soda, and four teaspoons of baking powder. This is what's gonna make it really fluffy. Whisk together all of those ingredients until they're nice and mixed. And now you can just add the wet ingredients right into here. You don't have to pre-mix them on their own. Two cups of plant milk. This is an oat milk. You could use almond or any other non-dairy milk of your choice. I have two tablespoons of maple syrup. About two teaspoons of vanilla. You could add a different flavor extract in there if you wanted to. Almond is nice sometimes. You could also do just something more fancy and fun. This is what's gonna replace the butter and the oil. It's applesauce. This is a half a cup of applesauce. If you don't have any applesauce, you could also mash up one large, really ripe banana. We're just gonna stir this until it's well combined. So after that is nice and mixed together, we're gonna let it sit for about two to five minutes just so that flax seed can expand and really start to bind everything together. 
While that's happening, heat a pan on low to medium heat. Once the pan's at the right temperature and the batter is rested, we're gonna scoop out quarter cup increments onto the pan. Cook for about two minutes until you start to see little bubbles forming on top of the pancake. Flip and do the same. <laughs> That's really his pancake. I like it. I want french fries. Happy birthday, Ephraim. It's not my birthday. Take two. Happy birthday, Ephraim. No, it's not my birthday. Can you pretend? Is it my birthday? It's your birthday! Oh, okay. We're <laughs> anyway, this is Ephraim's choice for if we were to have his birthday meal at home. What are we making? Chili powder. Chili powder? No. That's all we're having. Chili. We're just having a bowl of chili powder. Chili. But specifically... Chili. So this is a, a chili that we've... Ephraim's kind of made over time. Mm -hmm. This is last time it was bad because I put a lot of too much chocolate. Too much chocolate in. Are we adding chocolate to this one? No, I tried to make one with chat GPT. Uh, you made a chat GPT style chili? Yeah, remember? Oh yeah. Hey, if you'd like us to make a week of eating using only recipes from chat GPT, let us know, because that could be a fun little challenge for us. Uh, so a couple things we're gonna be doing here that, I mean, chili unto itself is already pretty close to being vegan. The only difference is if you put ground beef in. So what are we gonna put in instead? TVP. So how you make TVP is essentially you combine this with boiling water and you let it hydrate. If we were gonna use that for something else, we might wanna season the water as well to let the flavors get in. But because it's all going into a chili, all we have to do is hydrate we that. So we'll do that in a second. And then Ephraim got something special from the St. Lawrence Market last time he was in town. Take a bite. Downtown, I should say. Take a bite. Take a bite of this? Is this what is this? A dried ancho chili? Weird. Yeah. So or pepper. The recipe he, he wants to make calls for dried ancho chili powder. This is a dried ancho chili. He's gonna try to grind it in it's the magic bullet and hopefully it'll make some I've kind of a powder. It. I, it just feels oh, like there's moisture in there. Like Alright, you want to both gonna take a bite? No. Come on, let, I'll do it if you do it. Okay. You're not gonna do it, are you? <laughs> I'll do it. I'm not scared. You are scared. I'm a little scared. I'm not even gonna seed. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> why do I keep on? Why do I keep on chewing it? Here's the thing. <laughs> Mixed in with the rest of this, I think it'll add a nice flavor. It's got a really nice flavor to it. That's not bad. That's not bad. How spicy was it? It got up to a. Here's the thing. It was that kind of spicy where it was rising and rising and I thought it was gonna keep on going, but then it, it hit a, a, a ceiling early on. So I was I was over complaining. <laughs> it's got a nice flavor. I think mixed up in the chili, it's gonna be nice. All right, let's throw it in and see what it does. Anyway, this is really simple. We're going to throw in the onions and the green peppers. We're gonna get those and the garlic and get those, you know, cooking and sauteing. And then we're gonna throw everything else in and let it sit. 20 minutes before it is done cooking, where you will add in the beans. Cheers. Oh, that's a beautiful. Really? Yeah. I was gonna say you can put more of the chili. We only, we want light on the we chili need a powder. Bit more. We need a bit more flavor. I put a little more chili powder in it. Well, get, give it, it's gonna get more flavorful as it sits too, right? Mm, yeah. Keep in mind that. I could put, you could, well, you're not gonna measure it. You're just gonna. You're gonna free form the chili powder, huh? There's a huge chunk in there. Do not get that chunk in there. <laughs> there goes the chunk. Okay, that, that's good. You're but, not even measuring? Oh, the big chunk went in. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no! No, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough! All right, let's try this out. Try it again. That's what you do when you cook. You try it, you taste it, you adjust it, you try it again. It's pretty good. I like it a lot. Whoa, oh, there it came. Hello! Oh! That's a lot I mean, of chili powder, bud. That's a lot of, maybe we should add more sugar. We got more of this. Let's dump it all in. You know what? Here, I'm gonna try this. I wanna, I wanna get a sense of how hot this is, this powder. It's more flavor than it is spice. Oh, that's like all the outside. <laughs> it's all the skin on the side. Is that what you got from there? The side's a big goofy, but yeah, it's good. 
It's more flavorful than spicy. Although that one bite I had was weird. I could just stand here eating this. This is really good, bud. Good job. This is not going to be Mummy and Annie's favorite meal. Anyway, we're not going to show them eating it. Uh, that's not what this video is about. This video is more about like each of our individual birthday type meals. Well, I mean, we are showing me eat it. Yeah, we are eating it, so you got it. Anyway, we'll top this with some cheese, probably. Some non-dairy cheese, although he might put real cheese on. And I might throw some avocado in just to give a little fat. I think the fat would be nice. So for Annie's birthday... Annie. It's not my birthday. If you said the same thing, and yet this is the birthday video. It's not my birthday. Her, her birthday was recently, though. Anyway, this is your birthday dish you would have if we were making you a dish at home. Whoa, great. Huge grape. Um, one second, hold for grapes. Eventually. So what are we making for your birthday request meal? I don't know, what are we making? I thought you, you requested this. We're making Annie's favorite it's pesto. Cheeky. Green Goddess Pesto. Which cookbook was it from again? Your breath What cookbook was it from? The 15 minute one. The 15 minute one, great. Yeah. Okay, I guess I'll leave now. Bye. So Don't we're your mouth full. Are you come back to hug me and say you're sorry? Ah, you came back to tickle me. What a jerk. Get out of here. <laughs> anyway, how you make this is you, it's really, really, it's the simplest thing in the world. Um, you put everything into the food processor that is not the spaghetti. This is oil free because we're using silken tofu. While the spaghetti is cooking, we're going to throw in some broccoli. We have made a lot of pestos in this house and that is one of our favorites. My favorite. It's Annie's favorite. Get out of the chips! That's the dried mango, never mind. So what's awesome about this dish is it's kind of a little different every time for your vegetables. Like last time we put mushrooms in, I think, and broccoli. This time we're using cauliflower. And hopefully we have some calamata olives to throw on top. Yeah! I might have picked this for my favorite if Annie hadn't have. Yummy. Happy birthday to Willie. Happy birthday to Woody. What are we making for your birthday, Woody? I don't know, but it's feeling really cold out and dark. Yeah, usually your birthday's a lot warmer. Yeah. It's usually in the summer, but this year... <laughs> I get two birthdays? Wait, you get two birthdays. Wait a second. I don't know if I like that idea. You won't get older. Are you sure? I, that's not how this one works. This is just you get an extra meal that you like. Mm. What are we making for your birthday? You just said. Cold rolls. We're making cold rolls which is Willie's favorite meal, or one of them anyway. Mm -hmm. What does cold rolls include so people can understand at home? It's more of an assembly of ingredients than it is really a recipe. The recipe comes into play with like the sauces, I think. Yeah. So what do, what do we include in our cold rolls? Uh, tofu, mango, some vermicelli or glass noodles. Rice paper. Cabbage, yeah, the rice paper wraps, red peppers, carrots, you know, whatever, cucumber. Yeah. Whatever we got. Whatever the vegetables you got, cut them up in like stick form. But then for the sauces, what kind of sauces do we like to make? We make a... Like a chili sauce and then like a peanut yeah, sauce. Like a vinegary sauce and then a peanut sauce. Yeah. Garlic. Ginger. So yeah, so we'll show you how we make those two things. One hot tip for these um, sauces is to make them at the same time because they use like, I don't know, 75% of the same ingredients. Yeah. So we just put them side by side and put them in. So that's how you're going to see us making it. This recipe we have stolen completely from Simple Veganista. So I will put the link down below. Thank uh, you, but Simple it, Veganista. Yeah. Use this a lot. Yeah, but also I'm going to put the ingredients on the screen. So you uh, you don't even need to use the link, but you should use it because their website has lots of great stuff too. So the trick for the rice paper is just boil some water and pour it into like a pie plate or something like that. Just use hot. Hot tap water is all you need? Yeah. Oh, it's another version of a wrap, but you're using rice noodles. So it's kind of like a burrito. It's kind of like a wrap. Falls into that category, but it has more of a, I would say an Asian twist. We love it. It's Willie's favorite. Fire. A lot of people eat it as an appetizer, but we like it as a main, don't we? It's me. Hi. I'm the birthday. It's me. Uh, so for my birthday meal, we're going to make one of my all time favorites. What is your all-time favorite? Nacho Mountain. Ooh, la, la. My mountain. Get it? Nacho Mountain. Nacho Mountain. No. Anyway. I don't want to talk about it. Oh! But here's the thing. I already shot this uh, and have a video up. So we're going to compilation style this and put it up over top of this. Because 
But I'm doing such a good job. She is doing such a good job, but I'm honestly just feeling a too lazy to well, shoot all the birthday. process. It is my birthday after all. Um, but also we shot it beautifully with a crew. So uh, why not show you that? I had plans to show you how to make a re, like our kind of like refried bean dip. And I bought avocados, but they're not ripe yet. So I was gonna maybe show some guacamoles and those kind of things. So if that's interesting for you, let me know and I'll try to include that in a future video. But this is the kind of thing that I'd have for my birthday for sure. The first step is replacing what we would normally put on top would be like a ground beef, any kind of meat mixture. We're gonna make what I call Mexi lentils. So it's literally just putting uh, a cup and three quarters of water into a pressure cooker, a cup of lentils. I'm doubling the batch, so I got a lot more here. And then you're gonna add about one to two tablespoons of a taco spice mix. If you're making your own, it's mostly chili powder mixed with paprika, cumin, garlic salt, onion salt, red pepper flakes. Give it a really good mix. And then we are gonna cook that on the pressure cooker for about 10 minutes and then just let it sit. By the time everything else is ready, it'll be good to go. If you're doing this on a stove pot, you'll need a lot longer. You wanna bring it up to a boil and leave it for about 30 minutes. So now we are gonna make the nacho cheese. We're gonna take uh, an onion and a carrot, saute that on the pan. If it starts to stick, you can throw in a little bit of broth. We're just gonna let that cook for about a minute. Put a little bit of salt on top. It helps to release juices inside the vegetables. I'm gonna add just a little bit of my broth. So now I'm gonna throw in the potatoes uh, and we're gonna let that just cook for about three minutes. So this is cooked down to the right amount. And now we're gonna add some vegetable broth some tamari, you could also use soy sauce here, and some minced garlic. And we are gonna crank this up and get it up to the point where it's at a simmer. And then we're gonna leave it for about 10 to 15 minutes until the carrots and the potatoes are really, really soft. We're just gonna dump all of that good potato carrot goodness into our high-speed blender. This is where the nerdy magic happens. Some tahini, we have lemon juice, paprika, and garlic powder. And last but not least, nutritional yeast. This is the key to making it nice and cheesy. We are gonna blend this until it is nice and smooth, and then we're gonna add that tapioca starch. This is the stuff that's gonna make it really, really get thick and bind like a cheese. All right, so that's looking pretty well combined. So now we're gonna put it onto the stove top and stir it around and let it just kind of thicken a bit. The consistency you want is somewhat like a gravy, maybe a little thicker than gravy. That takes about 10 minutes. And then while we're doing that, we're gonna start to assemble our nachos. So now we have our little Mexi lentils. They're really ready to go. And they look, they're just kind of clumpy and tasty and delicious. Mm, we got a nice little kick to them. I love these things. So we're just gonna really generously sprinkle that all over the top of these chips. I've just put on some diced red pepper and some green olives, but you can top these with whatever you want. You want some jalapenos on there? Go for it. Making a mess. It's all right, nachos are supposed to be messy, right? If you're not getting a little messy while you cook, you just don't care. So now we're gonna add that ooey gooey cheese. I just like to take a scoop of it and just slather it all over. So this acts a bit more like a queso in this recipe. What's great about this cheese is I will put this in the fridge and it's gonna thicken up and then tomorrow I'll be able to use it like a spread. It's perfect for making a grilled cheese sandwich. And then it also freezes really well and then you can just grate it on top for shredded cheese. It is easily the most versatile cheese sauce that I have figured out, and I use it for everything. We are gonna cook this 
for about 10 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to get a little bubbly and just heat it all the way through. So the cheese has a nice little golden brown on top of it, and that's kind of what you're looking for. It chars it just a little bit in a really nice way. You can add some additional toppings at this time. I'm gonna throw some green onions on here. Feel free to add any additional toppings that you want, some guacamole, some salsa, some sour cream, but I'm just gonna have it as is. All right, now that we've seen everyone else's birthday dishes, let's make some cake. Welcome to what's probably the most important part of the video, a birthday cake. And this is not only any birthday cake, it's my personal favorite birthday cake, which I convinced Annie to let me make for her birthday because she's super awesome and she loves it too. This is a black forest cake, which was my favorite cake that my mom used to make me when I was a kid. So I've veganized it and also made it gluten free. This cake takes four steps. You've got to make the cake. You've got to make a cherry filling. You've got to make some buttercream icing to go inside. And you've got to make a ganache, which is like a chocolatey, fudgy kind of layer that goes over top. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, this is the birthday video. We are whole food plant-based 90% of the time. A lot of stuff you see in this video is the other 10%. That said, I have made this cake way healthier than most birthday cakes are by reducing the sugar and reducing stuff like the fat. I am using some plant-based margarine to make the buttercream icing. You could use avocado if you would like to, you could swap it out and it wouldn't be quite the same, but it'll be more of a whole food plant-based option. In terms of changing out the icing sugar, I honestly haven't experimented enough to know what you could do for that. If you know, make a comment in the comment down, make a comment in the comments down below. Seriously though, if you know how to make a buttercream icing that's whole food plant-based, please let us know down below. I haven't really tackled that because when we make cake in this house, we're making cake. We're not eating it every day. It's like a couple times a year, really, unless I'm doing something for a video. We just let ourselves enjoy it. So if you are not gluten-free, you're just gonna use whole wheat flour in this recipe. To make the cake, it, I mean, if you've made a cake before, it, it's not revolutionary compared to how you usually make most cakes. You wanna make some buttermilk, so all you have to do to do that is mix together the milk with some apple cider vinegar. Whatever plant milk you're using is fine. Now you're gonna sift all of your dry ingredients together into a bowl and mix that around. It's important that you sift them so that way there's no lumps. Because in cake, you want it to be smooth and delicious. Into that, we're gonna add the applesauce, vanilla, and then our milk, and then whisk that into ground. Once that's all combined, we're gonna add our applesauce, our vanilla, and our milk until everything's nice and combined. Then, here's the magic part. We're gonna slowly add in that cup of boiling water. This is the thing that makes it really light and airy. It's super, super important that that water is hot. I know what you're gonna think when you do this step. You're gonna look at this and go, this is way too runny. I've screwed up. I need to add some extra dry ingredients. You do not, it is fine. Trust me, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna divide that into two pans. We're gonna smack it down nice and hard to get all those air bubbles out. And then we're gonna bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 35 minutes, depending on your oven. Some ovens are different. You, you know your oven, hopefully. When you think it's ready, do a little toothpick test and see if it's ready. So I know you're probably thinking about the top of those cakes. They've cracked a little bit, which means that they sit on the outside faster than they did the inside. That's not untrue. I've also never made a gluten-free cake that didn't crack a little bit on top. It doesn't necessarily take away from the moisture or the enjoyment of it. It's just the nature of it. I probably should have made these in an eight inch pan as opposed to the nine inch pan, but that's okay because all that means is I get to put more filling on the inside. It's gonna be slightly thinner layers so it won't be as tall of a cake. And then you just have wider slices, more icing, right? You're gonna to wanna to let that cool in the pan for at least 10 minutes. I'm waiting for my cakes to cool down so I can flip them onto the pans. It's a bit thin. Should use the eight inch pans. This is still gonna be fine and delicious. Also, gluten-free doesn't tend to rise as much. It's gonna be delicious. It's gonna be a delicious thin cake. <laughs> the layer of uh, buttercream is gonna help a lot. 
Now, while that's happening, we can make our cherry mix because we want it to cool down and thicken anyway. And all we really have to do for that is to take a small bag of frozen cherries, about four and a half cups, put that into a pot and let it warm up and bubble. We're gonna add in some arrowroot flour and stir it around until it's nice and thick and mixed and let it cool down. So at this point, the cherry sauce is still gonna be pretty runny. Uh, that's okay, that's what you want because if you cook it down too much on the stove top, it'll be too thick and it won't spread nicely when you want to put it on your cake. Woo! But as you can see, it's steaming. So we gotta get this down and let it cool in the fridge so that it'll be ready to spoon on top of our, spoon on top of our cake later on. Now when you're like 45-ish minutes away from finishing your cake, that's when you wanna make the chocolate ganache because it needs time to sit and set in a bowl. You have a couple options here. If you're using a bar of chocolate, you're gonna chop it up. Otherwise, you can just use dark chocolate chips for this as well. You're gonna wanna put that chocolate into a heat-proof bowl and you're gonna wanna heat up your milk on the stove. Once that milk has come to a light bowl, you're gonna pour it over your chocolate, rotating the bowl so that everything is nice and covered. Now don't do anything, don't start stirring, just cover the bowl up with a plate or something and leave it for about four minutes or so. After that, you're gonna start whisking from the inside out to incorporate it all into it's a nice, smooth mixture. And everything is, you know, it's just moving along, it's flowing, it looks like it's all part of the same thing. You'll know the moment it comes together just by looking at it, it's gorgeous. This is where you wanna add in any flavors you wanna add. Put a little sprinkle of salt because it's gonna bring out that chocolate goodness. If you wanna throw a little bit of vanilla in there any other kind of flavorings. Now just let it sit in the counter for at least a half an hour to thicken up before you use it. Last but not least, the buttercream icing. So hopefully you've let your butter or whatever sit out in the counter for a bit so it's gotten to room temperature, it's a little bit soft. If not, um, heat up a glass and then put it over top of the butter stick or whatever and like the heat from inside of it will just soften it. A nice little quick little hack for you. We're gonna throw that into a stand mixer and mix it around until it's nice and smooth and creamy. We're gonna throw in that vanilla, continuing to stir it and scraping down the sides as we need to. And then we're gonna throw in the icing sugar about a half a cup at a time. And then we're gonna increase the speed of the mixer until everything is just nicely combined and it's nice and smooth. So now it's really up to you to decide the texture you want of this buttercream. If you want it a little creamier, you can add a little more milk. If you want it a little thicker, add a little more icing. Now to assemble the cake. This is the fun part. It's what we've been waiting for, right? So what we're gonna do is take the flat part of one of the cakes and put it on the very, very, very bottom. We're gonna take that buttercream icing and put it on top the middle of that because it's gonna be like the filling inside of the cake sandwich here. So we're gonna spread it all around. You don't have to get too perfect or pretty here. Just keep it inside of the cake. You don't want it spilling out over the edges. So maybe you know, leave about an inch rim on the outside because when you push the other cake layer on top, it's gonna spread out naturally anyway. Now on top of that buttercream icing, we're gonna put about three quarters of a cup of that cherry filling and just kind of spread it all around. So yeah, I mean, you can put as much as you want. Take half of the mixture, you just wanna save some for on top of the cake. Take the other cake, flip it upside down so the flat part is on top. And now you're gonna set that into the icing. And this is where you can use whatever icing you have left over to patch up the sides. Kind of like, you know, doing drywall a little bit. Uh, and just really get it in so you have a nice smooth layer all the way around as best you can. If not, it's a bit of a rustic cake. Spread it around so you have a nice mixture so every slice of cake is gonna get some of that cherry filling. Now we're gonna put the other cake layer on top of that, upside down, so that when we put the ganache on top, we've got a flat side to lay it all on. Push that down, check out the sides, see if there's any cracks or things we want to fill in. It's kind of like doing drywall a little bit and smooth that all around. Now is our last step. We are going to put on our ganache. Actually, I said to put it on a plate, I lied. If you have a, a cooling rack, put that over top of something, because what you're gonna to want to do is now pour that ganache over the middle. And here's the trick, if that ganache is working the way it should be, you don't wanna spread it, you just wanna pour it on top and then rotate the plate around or the cooling rack, whatever you're using, so that the chocolate runs around naturally, because that's what's gonna give you a nice smooth layer all around without seeing your, your brush strokes of, of straightening things. 
So now take that cake and throw it into the fridge and let it cool for at least five minutes or so so that the chocolate can start to set. Once that's done or just before serving, put the rest of the cherry filling on top and that's that, that's your cake. So this cake, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I had a couple problems with this cake. Fail. I, it's not a fail, it just looks, I mean, here's the thing, I'm not a cake decorator. I'm just not, I'm, I've never been good at really icing well. My cakes never look amazing, they always taste good. I used my pumpkin milk for the ganache and I'm wondering if that didn't have like an effect on it. Oh. But no, I think it's gonna be okay. It just seems a little runnier than it should be. It looks like hell, <laughs> but that's okay. I got a bonus birthday dessert for you. It's actually really, really quick, but super treaty. So not even close to being whole food plant-based. It's an ice cream cake. So this is really simple and it comes together in like no time, but you need time to let it set. And really all you need, this is the most important thing. You need like some kind of a silicon circle or square, whatever shape you wanna make it. It's gonna come out of this way easier. If you do it inside like anything else, it's just gonna be hard to get it out. What you're gonna do is take a, this is a 342 gram package of gluten-free Oreos. You could use any sandwich cookie, ideally a plant-based one. And all you're gonna do is pulse this up inside of a food processor. And what's great is the filling is gonna help bind it together. Use about, I don't know, I'd say 75 to 80% of this and just smush it into the base of your cookie layer, of your, of your sorry, your base, so, so the base. So that's what's gonna be like the base of your cake. And then literally taking like two pints of non-dairy ice cream. So we let this ice cream melt, not really melt, but like thaw on the counter a little bit. So it'll spread nicely. The trick, is you want it soft enough, it'll spread, but not too soft, that's liquidy, but also not too hard that it doesn't spread nicely and it breaks up your crumbs. But worst case, it's delicious either way, so who, you know, who cares? Ploop. Or if you wanna make this healthier, you could just do, you know, two pints worth of sorbet or like, you know, frozen fruit, nice cream that you make yourself, right? Any flavor you want, but because it's a birthday, it's for my mother-in-law, we're gonna make it a little special. So we got some cookie dough ice cream by So Delicious, not a sponsor. And the other thing you can also do is uh, put two flavors on one, put some more cookie dough in the middle, or if you wanna make some kind of a nougat, uh, I don't have a recipe handy, but if you want something like that, I could do it in a future video potentially, let me know. Mmm, it's important to lick the spatula. Um, I'll think of a reason later, but it's important. And then when this is done freezing, what I'm gonna do is melt some non-dairy chocolate with just a little bit of coconut oil because it makes it spreadable. And then I'm gonna drizzle it over top and then sprinkle the rest of the cookie dough crumbles on top of that. And that is going to be uh, the top of the ice cream cake. And if you have extra crumbles, you can save them for other toppings of desserts or just let Willie eat them all. Now we put this in the freezer until we wanna eat it. I hope you enjoyed watching us make some of our favorite meals birthday style. Apologies that that cake didn't quite turn out the way that I was hoping to. Honestly, working with various gluten-free flours can be a challenge and that was a new one. I should have stuck to my, my staples that I know are tried and trued and tested and whatever that phrase goes. And just a reminder to let us know in the comments below how you like to celebrate your birthdays. And if you haven't subscribed, do so for more videos like this. Speaking of which, YouTube would like you to watch this video next. And it's my birthday, so you should hang out on this channel all day long to celebrate with me for yourself. Get yourself something pretty. Thanks, bye.